Hello guys, welcome to this video tutorial of weird GCD value from Code Chef Starters 18. Uh, so yeah, a brief introduction about myself. I'm Istasis Mishra. I'm a fourth year undergrad at AAAD Hyderabad. I'm uh, currently, uh, so uh, I've been to ICPC regionals twice in my first and second year and I've represented India in IY 2018. So without any further ado, I'll just get right into this problem. So let's start uh, with the prerequisite of solving this problem, which is you need to know about the Euler totient function and how to calculate the value of this function over all uh, integers from 1 to n n o of n log log n time using sieve of Eratosthenes. Okay, so if you do not know the Euler Totian function and still want to uh, look at this, do uh, look at the solution of the problem anyway. So I'll just briefly explain what this function is. This function is represented by phi. Phi of n is equals number of integers x less than n such that GCD of x and n is equals 1. So the number of numbers, number of integers less than x, number of positive integers less than uh, n that are co prime to n. So for example, phi of 6 will be equals what? So what are the numbers, what are the positive integers less than 6? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? 1 is co prime, 2 is not co prime, 3 is not co prime, 4 is also not co prime. So it's only 1 and 5. So the phi of 6 will be 2. So hopefully what the function is is clear now. Now we'll be using these to solve this problem that we have. So let's look at, let's try to understand what the problem is asking for. At first we have defined a function f, right? And f of a, b is equal to max of over all x belonging to natural numbers. The absolute, uh, the, the difference between values of gcd a, x and gcd b, x, right? So this is f a b for any two integers a and b. Now what the problem is asking for is that you are given an uh, integer k, right? You are given an integer k and you need to find the number of ordered pairs a b such that f of a b is equal to k. So hopefully this problem is clear. These are your constraints. p is up to 10 power 6 and k is up to 10 power 6. Okay, so let's try to look at this function a b uh, f of a b first. Okay, assume that a is less than equals b without any loss of generality, right? A is less than equals b. So first one observation. Okay, what is f of a a? What is the maximum difference in GCD that you can get? Since both of these are a's. It's always 0, right? GCD of AX minus GCD of AX. The value will always, always be 0. So F of AA, the maximum GCD you can get is 0. But K is greater than equals 1. So same numbers will never count. So A will never be equal to B for us, right? We need to count the number of ordered pairs AB, right? Two numbers equal will never be our answer. So we can remove this equal case. So, assume that A is less than B, okay, without loss of generality. So, if we count the number of pairs where A is less than B, all we need to do is just in a double our answer, right? So, let's say we found, find the number of ordered pairs A less than B, then we need to find the number of ordered pairs B less than A, which will be the exact same, right? So, if your answer is X, you just need to print 2X, that is it. So, assume that A is less than B now. We find the number of ordered pairs such that A is less than B. 
what is the maximum gcd that you can get anyway so let's correct this this was b yeah so this is a very uh, easy to come up with property the gcd of x and y is bounded by 1 and min of x y right so the maximum possible uh, gcd uh, f value that you can ever get is if this took a value of b and if this took a value of 1 right then the value of f of a b will be equals b minus 1 right note that the opposite is not true if this is 1 and this is a that will not work because a minus 1 because a is less than b so a minus 1 is less than b minus 1 so b minus 1 is clearly more so we want to maximize so the maximum possible value of uh, f a b will be equals b minus 1 when can this have a value of 1 and this have a value of b if this has a value of b that means that x must be equal to b and if this has a value of 1 that means that gcd of a b is equals to 1 so for two co prime numbers uh, the value of f will be b minus 1 f of a b if the gcd of a b is equals 1 will be b minus 1 so this is an important observation from here we can do something that is gcd of p q let's assume gcd of a b is equals g and let's say our p is a by g and our q is b by g okay what will be our gcd of p q since we have divided it by the greatest possible factor that is common to both now the gcd must be 1 so what will be f of p q since a is less than b that means p is also less than q if f uh, so f of p q will be equals q minus 1 from this right now we want this value to be equals k uh, not this value will come back yeah not this value we want f of a b to be equals k f of a b will be equals g multiplied by f of a by g and b by g right and this is just f of uh, p q right and this was q minus 1 so if we put the value of q that will be b by g minus 1 right so here it will be g multiplied by b by g minus 1 which is b minus g and this we want to be equal to k right and th that was the problem how many pairs exist a b such that this b minus g will be equals k b minus gcd of a b is equals k so look at this equation this is a divisible by g this is divisible by g so that means g is also a factor of k right gcd of a b must divide this is another observation we are making so for every factor of k we need to uh, we can find something okay so yeah let's let's look at uh, the yeah so what is the value of uh, so q q into g minus g so this b is equal to q into g right q into g minus g is equals k so q will be equals k by g plus 1 right yeah k by g plus 1 so the value of q you now know now you need to find the number of p's right so number of p's such that gcd of pq is equals 1 
right and the value of q is known here so gcd of p and k by g plus 1 is equals 1 for every factor g okay for every factor g and p must be less than k by g plus 1 so for every factor g of k uh, we need to find the number of integers p less than k by g plus 1 such that gcd of p and k by g plus 1 is equal to 1 what, what how do you what, what will be this number so earlier we learned about the Euler Torsion function, right? And what is the definition of the Euler Torsion function? Number of integers less than n such that GCD of x and n is equal to 1, right? Isn't this the exact same thing? So all you need to do is find Torsion function of k by g plus 1. And that is it. So you iterate through all the factors of k, g, do k by g plus 1, find the uh, uh, torsion functions, add them up, and you have the answer. That is all that uh, it takes. Every factor, by the way, not, not just prime factors. So for every factor g of k, you have to add this number. And that is it. And time complexity, let's first look at the uh, code, and then we'll be coming to the time complexity of this solution. So this is the setter's co code that I got from the editorial of this problem that you can find on Code Chef Discuss. So this pre-compute fire thing, this is using Steve of Eratosthenes to find the complexity, uh, the pi function of all numbers from z, uh, 1 to n in O of n log log n time. Okay. Uh, the proof of this I'm not doing. Pre-compute answer. So how the code works is that it pre-compute phi, pre-compute answer. So for every k, you already save the answer in an array. So uh, so that every time you receive t, you take k, you just print answer k, and you are done. So after pre-computing phi, you pre-compute the answer, right? And yeah, so every in our solution. The sum was just the summation of all phi's, right? Phi of every factor. But we also need to, in the end, multiply the answer by 2 so that the uh, inverse of the ordered pairs also comes. So a, a less than b, we are counting. b less than a also exists. So for that, uh, you need this multiplication of 2. So this outer loop will go from every number from 1 to n. This inner loop will go from uh, i and it will be incremented by i. So, all the numbers j uh, uh, are a multiple of i, right? So, i is a factor of j, right? It starts from i and it increments by i every step. So, that means i is a factor of j. If i is a factor of j, answer of j plus equals 2 into phi of i plus 1, right? It's not, not very difficult to code as well, so easy, right? And this part is just save. There's nothing extra going on here. Okay, so coming back to the complexity, this loop, okay, this pre-compute answer, uh, what we can agree on is that the outer loop will run O of n times, right? It's the inner loop that we have to calculate about. How many times will the inner loop run for an i? n by i, right? So, uh, like when i is 1 it will take n time when i is 2 it will take n by 2 time when i is 3 it will take n by 3 time and so on till n by n when i is equal to n or like it cannot be equal to n but uh, in time complex complexity we can take one more iteration doesn't matter right so when i is equal to n it will take n by n time right so overall our complexity should uh, like when we don't have a closed form it should look something like this o of n by 1 plus n by 2 plus n by 3 plus up to n by n right so now if you look at this properly let's do n by 4 plus n by 5 plus n by 6 
plus n by 7 plus n by 8 and so on till n by n okay what we can write is this is equal to o of we can uh, take the so this is n plus n by 2 if I change this to n by 2 will the value increase the value increase right and o only counts the upper bound so I am changing n by 3 to n by 2 I will keep n by 4 same and all of this I will change to n by 4 and the value will increase right and we need the upper value so this is actually equal to the o of that now n by 8 8 times so you, you can see n n by 2 2 times n by 4 4 times n by 8 8 times n by 16 16 times n by 32 32 times and so on till n right and this is equals o of n plus all of this will be n all of this will be n how many n's will be there log n right so overall the complexity of this solution is o of t plus n log n and the value of n here you already yeah the value of the maximum value of k that is n here okay the maximum value of k is 10 power 6 and does this solution pass so hopefully you enjoyed the solution it's not very difficult as you can see the code is not really big it's really small only only thing is that it's a bit mathy right uh, you don't actually need to prove all of it while solving the uh, while solving it these two things are really needed for this problem all your Toshian function and Siva uh, Firatus Finis otherwise this problem I don't think there's any other way to solve this problem so yeah uh, we'll meet in the next editorial bye